Hey everyone, this is the LEGO Ninjago Season 12 Empire Temple of Madness set. And at first glance, it looks like, oh, I don't know, maybe the main boss, the main villain's evil lair, you know, his fortress, his castle. And that's kind of what it is. But it's also kind of like a ninja warrior Mount Midoriyama mixed with a classic Donkey Kong uh, level in a game world in a cartoon that's about toys and this is a toy of all that you know I just come take a closer look so think video game and here in the front you have this extreme forced perspective entryway I'm curious to see how this looks in the actual show I believe that this is truly extreme forced perspective and it looks pretty cool interestingly the uh, the red pieces the large red slopes to either side I believe are new for this year. I've not seen that particular size before. It's it's odd to me. Got some teal that's mixed into the color scheme here to make things a little bit different and interesting. And the idea is that you get up to here and you see the main bad guy, Unagami, behind this force field. Well, you need to deactivate the force field to essentially activate him, you know, to have the final battle against him. So that's what this is all about, is getting to him so that you can then fight him and hopefully, you know, defeat him in some way. There are some nice small details around the edges, probably more details than are actually really needed here. But, you know, some of the construction techniques are nice. There are some stickers that are used, but not too many, I feel. They are clear backed. Uh, so you do need to be careful and worry about dust and air bubbles and things, especially against the transparent colored pieces they get attached to this is a really nice assembly here just you know building in every kind of different direction and this is a pretty tall tower and the the idea is that you do need to get all the way to the top up by where the leaderboard is being displayed right now to get to the final slot for that kitana now if you already have collected kitanas from other sets that's great but this set also comes with a full set of three kitanas so there's one slot right there and i believe right when you basically start the game or start the level you have access depending upon which way you go to get the yellow one over here or to get the pink one over there i believe this is supposed to be a cooperative level where multiple players are working on it at the same time because you do some platforming around the sides so you jump up here you jump up there you jump up there they all have arrows on the top you jump up there and then finally you get up to this platform from this side where Look at that. It's an arcade machine, and it looks like this is where you actually play the very game that you are presently participating in. So it's a little bit meta in that way. You can also stock up on some additional weapons when you get to this level. And behind there, there's a storage bin with still more of the special Ninjago blade and other you know, basic melee weapon pieces so that all of the parts that are included in that set are available to you here. And if you instead scale the other side, there's an additional challenge that you're greeted with up here. This is supposed to be the kitchen of a sushi master known as Sushimi. We'll see the minifigures soon. This actually has a kitana slot on the back here. It's just a knob, but it's the idea is that you would be able to put a kitana in there and use that to turn this. But what's weird about it is that when you do turn that to be able to pass, then you get attacked. So this is kind of where the this piece actually got stuck right there. There we go. This is where the Donkey Kong kind of thing comes into play. These are printed pieces for this season, for this series. I don't know which way it goes. I think it goes this way. And they're like evil sushi rolls that come down and try to get you. But they act like barrels that roll down from above. So I guess the idea here is that you have to pass that challenge and then with this up, that's when you're able to jump up onto this platform and then proceed from there. They don't have really good ways to climb the whole thing. You kind of have to use your imagination a bit. At least these supports back here do have bar sized uh, rails for their edges. So many figures can hold on to them. So I guess you can imagine them climbing up there. And just one last detail over here, since this is supposed to be a chef's kitchen, an evil chef's kitchen, there's also a set of, uh, I guess they're supposed to be hashi sticks or chopsticks 
When you finally get to the top, there's a kitana that's already there, or depending upon how you want to play it, you may have to, you know, actually bring that up with you. But then that is able to go into a slot, which is connected to an axle that goes all the way down to the base of this. So there's an entire structure or an entire uh, assembly with the universal joints and you can see it going down in there with the axle that goes down and down and down. And I'll show you what it actually does when you turn it. You ready? Here it goes. Uh -huh. It's actually pretty slick. I like how the different panels interleave and also the shaping in there is nice. It's all built on the side and the hinges are angled so they're not just at plain 90 degree angles and it just yeah just looks kind of cool now when you do open that up it says game over on either side and that's because you're meeting the boss who's on his throne here unagami you know obviously it's just an intimidation tactic you're not supposed to be able to beat the boss so this is supposed to be game over for you but there's just his throne let me actually pull him out he's not even attached with any uh, studs or anything so that's it for his throne and while he's back there he can be monitoring the different games in this game universe this prime empire universe which i guess has different mini games and such so he has these different panels that show different things that are going on and you can just imagine that the different ninja are at different stages playing different mini games along the way before they get to the ultimate end game as they would call it so just, I guess that, I don't know, is that supposed to be like centipede there or is it just a representation of bits or some other data construct? And then finally there's this dragon game. One thing conspicuously missing is something to do with the third Kitana. I mean, we've got that one up at the top that you use for one of them. You got the trap over on this side that you use for one of them. But then what do you do with the third? I just don't know. I'm assuming we'll find out in the show but it doesn't seem to be attached to this build here. And I feel like that's a missed opportunity. Maybe they'll they'll explain it away, you know, in, in the story. But I feel like this as the major big structure build and the end game build for this season, uh, I feel like, you know, you should be able to use all of your collectibles from the season here. Here's a closer look at Unagami himself, the evil overlord, except he's not overlord. Sorry. Didn't mean that literally, just figuratively. It's a cool figure, I think, with cool printing on it, an interesting beard piece, an interesting hair piece. The hair piece I got has just a little bit of scuffing in it. It's weird. It's like it got uh, got stuck in a machine at some point, but it's not bad. Dual molded, so that works out well. He has his staff. He also does come with those two discs underneath of him, which represent energy that is levitating him. And beneath there... Beneath the hair pieces, he has two faces. So this is one here, and this is his full MCP mode face, or Darth Maul. I mentioned Tsushimi, so this is him here, a, uh, a mini boss, I'm assuming. The print for the torso is really poor. The opacity is just bad. That's supposed to be a white tank top, and uh, you know, it's, it's not white. <laughs> it's kind of sheer. Uh, but yeah, this is Tsushimi, an interesting character in some ways, very brightly colored and everything. I need to take a bunch of this stuff off so you can see more of the prints. There you go. See, look at those eyebrows. <laughs> and he also has decent printing on the back of the torso, but again, just not opaque enough. And then this is a red visor, just a red visor. They're called the red visors. They're just the most generic of bad guys, you know, just basic foot soldiers, essentially couple katanas on the back again the health bar up above and uh, some sort of blaster pistol weapon and that is the astronaut style of visor can be raised up just a bit and once again i need to take a bunch of stuff off so these each have two faces themselves and i, I don't know the exact meaning of the two faces so this is one this is the other perhaps this is the aggro version and the other is just the standard patrolling version, or it could be that this is when Unagami is directly controlling one as opposed to allowing them to just use their own default programming. Pretty good printing on the back of the torso here, as well as on the front. On the good guy side, here is Digi Cole, 
with his game controller hilt based weapon and i think that the ninja just in general in this season look pretty good they're fairly consistent which is fine you know they carry their colors quite well and then they have that really bright white accent color which surprisingly actually works out with the amount of it that they use uh, i never would have expected that to look quite as good as it does but it's a pretty good scheme in general there he is with all the stuff removed so you can see a lot more of the print and around the back you do get an alternate face and more good printing for the torso which has some metallic sheen so when the light hits it just right then it really comes to life otherwise it's relatively subtle which i'm fine with here's digi j and he has a sickle at the end of his weapon there once again just following the same basic scheme lots of the character's main color is used the katanas are in the light spring green color that is not glow in the dark in any way shape or form and once again underneath more of those prints to be seen more of the coverage and there's his more normal face and the print on the back of the torso finally rounding up the ninja team this is dg lloyd once again with the game controller based weapon the base color here is just regular lego green not bright green though it does have lime green as one of the accent colors and then they also bring in a little bit of that bright spring green from his arm into the gi and around the back once again you're not going to see much till i remove a bunch so there's that alternate face good printing around the back of the torso with even more of the light spring green color and there's the rest of what was slightly obscured before from the front set also comes with this sushi roll which i'm assuming is of a higher level because this one is able to fly around on the screen i guess and uh, also has arms and is able to hold on to a weapon still uses that same print though for its face i guess here are this set's spare leftover parts including a nice range of the different colors of special katanas you got a extra cleaver in there a couple of regular lightsaber hilts one uh, ice skate up here yeah just a nice selection of little things and finally here's the spent sticker sheet so you can get an idea of how many of those things had to be applied the set is eighty dollars us eight zero and let me let you see the box once again a little bit a little bit closer and also i'll show you the back of it i would like to see it at seventy dollars honestly for the amount of stuff that you get here uh you know just just the volume of stuff it makes sense the the price makes sense with the number of figures and also the number of parts and the sizes of the parts and everything actually it has a fair number of fairly large pieces so i think the price to part ratio is excellent on this but just once everything really gets built up uh a lot of it is hollow honestly uh, there is a lot of complex building for some of the mechanisms and also some of the details for the small bits of roof and such but when it's done i feel like a lot of the pieces don't add substance, don't add the right kind of value that something like this needs. You know, honestly, this is more of a play set. It's something that needs to be interacted with, with the minifigures. And really, really, there just aren't that many places to put minifigures around this. You have the platforms, but having just tiles uh, means that you don't have good places to attach feet. So, you know, for a longer term display and such, that doesn't work out so well and just in general i mean these these platforms are kind of slick you know so things will fall off there it doesn't have a place to put the third kitana which is weird to me you don't have a lot of good places to put figures just in general to move them around it's nice to get structures right we don't get structures that frequently from lego relative to vehicles and flyers and you know things that are ridden but uh i like the I like the verticality of it. I like how complex it is. I like how it goes a little bit brave with its color scheme. It has some interesting parts of its build, to be sure, but um, it just doesn't quite work out for me in the end. Maybe it looks decent on display, but as soon as you want to try to put minifigures in there and show that you know this battle was going on, this endgame battle, 
or this cooperative fight to conquer this structure, it starts to it just starts to lose, honestly. The minifigure selection is fine. And including all three of the the collectibles in one set is very good. Always nice to see that in a large expensive set. Why not? You know, they're they're cheap to produce. And if somebody has the you know has the money to get one of the big sets for a a season for a series, then you know, let them let them get all the DLC. You know, let them get all the unlocks. I, I think that totally makes sense. There are a lot of nice parts in this. Yeah, there are a lot of things I like about it, but in the end, I just don't feel like it's as successful and as useful as this much stuff should be. Even though I do feel the price to part ratio is very good, the overall value is a little bit on the low side because it's so open and empty, skeletal, and yeah, just doesn't quite meet my expectations. Actually, it, it falls a fair bit short of them. For me personally those are my thoughts feel free to disagree the comment section is yours now check out my build video if you want to see how this actually went together how the mechanisms work and especially if you want to just skip around looking for interesting things i recommend that you look for the parts where i'm building the eaves you know all the all the roof parts those are the most interesting things in in the entire build in my opinion so just look for those uh they're they're built just down on the table by themselves as sub assemblies so check out either my real-time build for that or the speed build if you'd like to. I'll work on the next review video for this channel and talk to you again very soon.